In this quick overview, we're going to look at the new eBay store designs that are included in the spring 2014 seller release. So eBay have been released some new store design options and in this video we're going to be covering and looking over the following features and Dave the first one for me is absolutely huge. It's a responsive design for your eBay store. And you love responsive design Matt and it's one of those things which is becoming more and more important the more buyers that go onto phones and tablets um, and it's nice to see that eBay have, have took note of that. Indeed, and again, this is the first major update for the the humble eBay store in the best part of 10 years. It, it's, wow. it, yeah, because we've got basically got the same features today as what I had when I was selling. And the, yeah, there's a few extra bits thrown in, but the, this is like the biggest fundamental change to the eBay stores or eBay shops, as you may know them by, in the, not in the best part of nine years, maybe more. We're also going to be looking at the billboard images and also a quick note around your eBay icon, which appears on your eBay store. Both of those are good changes as well. I'd like to add in there. I, I really like them. We're then going to look at the seller store description in Lightbox. Yeah, so we'll see that's kind of cool. And that kind of indicates that we've got jQuery on the page, which is super cool. We've also got the follow button, which is of a very special note, and also the social icons being included in the store as well for the first time. Yeah, and we also have the featured products area, which is a real nice change. And again, another thing that I really like. The, the product images are larger than what you've got right now on your eBay store. Oh, and we've got this something called lazy loading images, which is for speed. And we'll see this in action in a few minutes. So it sounds a bit nerdy, but it's really straightforward and also really cool, from especially from your buyer's point of view as well. Another interesting one, Matt, is the custom pages have gone AWOL. <laughs> <laughs> They've completely gone AWOL. So we don't know what eBay have done with those. And this is why this is actually part one of a two-part series. And we'll, we've got a special note that on that in a few moments. And we've also got a modal window uh, for viewing products. And if, if you don't know what modal means, you'll find out in a few moments as well. Now, we did say there was a note, which is this is part one, which is being recorded prior to any updates which have been made to eBay. And in part two, we'll be focusing on the settings available for you on eBay UK, and we'll show you how to take advantage of the new eBay stores layout. So with that said, let's go and take a look at some live examples. And all the links that we use in this video are going to be right below in the guide that accompanies this video. Right, Dave, so let me just drag this across onto my screen. And we've been got four tabs open here. We, we, when we'll be looking at these in more detail in a few moments. But the biggest point here is responsive design. So I tell you what, Dave, the best way to explain this is to actually show you. Yep. So on the right hand side, what I'm going to do, I'm going to resize my browser window. And so, again, it doesn't matter if I maximize the whole window or just bring it down to the size where we're at right now, is that it's maxed out at 1,200 pixels. And again, that's the, just the width. But uh, responsive basically means that the site or the page, aha, there you go. Can you see it just been it's switched? from so the first jump, yeah, from, from the first four to jump, three. Yeah. From four products down to three. And also our header image also resized as well. So let's just keep going like so. And there you go. There's the next jump as well. So we've now this header image has got much smaller, and this is what would what you would see is like your full size screen on a mobile device. So that would be an iPad, a Droid, um, or your your iPhone, for example. And again, if we keep on going, we'll see that it will just settle it. That that is that's the the smallest as it, as it will go. And what that basically means is that your eBay store will now fit to whatever device your customer is using. So it doesn't matter if it's a tablet, a full-blown desktop, as you're seeing right now, or their mobile phone, is that your eBay store is going to look very, very similar across all the devices, which I think is absolutely key, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, definitely. I mean, mobile has been growing, you know, ridiculously over the past couple of years. 
And eBay know that. eBay Mobile is one of the most, you know, they have one of the most downloaded apps in any of the app stores. And more and more customers are using tablets and mobiles to actually buy from eBay. So this is eBay making sure they get as good a buying experience as possible. Mm -hmm. And again, it's something like 30% of all purchases are made via a mobile device. And again, that's an old stat. It's probably more like 40. And over the next year or two, that's going to go more like 50%. And again, that's an older stat now, but uh, that, again, that's the right thing. I'm looking at my my items. I'm just picking up my phone off my desk, and yeah, I was searching on eBay for for items earlier. So it yeah, it's important that your business presence, and that's what your eBay store is. It's your business presence is up to date with it. And again, um, this is like the biggest update which I've seen from eBay of around the eBay stores in like a decade. And that's not an exaggeration. The, the eBay store functionality, which you've got right now on eBay, so ignore this update, is the the, the, the eBay store and the layouts. That's, that's like what I had back when I was selling on eBay. And that was back in like 2002, 2003. Yeah, we've had a few minor updates since then. But this is the biggest change which has happened to the eBay stores since they were first introduced. Um, I was going to say, so eBay stores certainly haven't changed in you know my history of, of playing with eBay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this is a be a, a, a bit of an overdue change, perhaps. Indeed, indeed. So moving on to point number two. So responsive, really, really cool, really, really cool. And again, it, this is eBay moving with the times now. At last, when it comes to the eBay store, number two is around this billboard image at the top now. Dave, I did mention we've got four tabs open for you listening yep. to this so you can see what sellers are doing with their billboard image. Now, what we mean by that, and again, I'm just going to highlight this on the screen for you, is that this great big image at the top. So right now we're on Jeff's music gear. If we go and have a look at Cardboard Legends, and you'll see that this seller has been made a collage at the top with the Legends at the top. Mm-hmm. If we go across to Digital Goa, let me just scroll my browser up a touch, and you'll see that you've got this down, you've got this bird's eye view of a beach, which does look absolutely tempting, uh, <laughs> considering the time of year. And again, we're recording this in spring uh, 2014. And again, they're using this for promotional, but also brands reinforcement. So you've got Digital Goa with their logo there on the left hand side. That's being reinforced over on the left-hand side. And then again, they've got a promotional message in the top right-hand corner. And the other example which we've got is Crush Vintage. And you'll see that they've got this fantastic lifestyle image up here in the header as well. That fits in perfectly with, obviously, their brand that they're trying to portray. Mm -hmm. Now, an interesting one for me, Matt, is obviously this just screams out to me Facebook cover photo. Mm, it does. It does indeed, though. And, and, and Facebook cover photos were first introduced in uh, 2011, I believe. Wow. So three years later, and um, eBay have, have adopted the same thing. And mm-hmm. for me, it will be really interesting to see what sellers choose to do with this now. Because eBay have given you some prime real estate right at the top of the screen. The first thing that any buyer, any you know, potential shopper, customer, is going to see when they come to your store. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to see what the the innovative ones and the -the out-of-the-box thinkers do with this in order to get the the potential customer to take action. That's Mm -hmm. going to be interesting. Oh, and when we were discussing this before we hit record, is that we come up with a really cool idea to do with the follow button, which we'll mention in a few moments' time. But just going on to the, the eBay icon is that you can see over, over here on the left-hand side, again, I'll highlight this on the screen for Crush Vintage, is that they're not using all of their real estate. So right now on eBay, your eBay logo will be 310 pixels by 90. So it, it's this little rectangle image. And in this store change, it's moved to a square, which is 150 by 150 pixels square. And this seller hasn't used all they're, they're basically all of their real estate for their logo. And so if we just jump back to Digital Goa, for example, then you'll see that you're, they're using every single pixel in there. If we jump across to uh, Cardboard Legends, they're using every single pixel. And then we end back up on Jeff's music store, uh, music gear, we'll see that the, Jeff is using the whole box for his eBay icon. So you're going to need a square icon for that. 
Uh, the other thing to note on the eBay store is that we've got the seller store description in the light box. So whereas before on the standard eBay shop design, you'd have like the whole 300 uh, characters worth of text at the top uh, on the eBay store. Now is that if it goes over maybe like 30 to 30 or so words is that you get this read more, read more link and the customer can then read the rest about your store. And that really does highlight the point of the, the, again, I'll just highlight this on my screen right now, is that it does highlight the point of the first 30 or so words which appear on there because that's what your customer is going to see. Yeah, definitely. And again, this is eBay making the page as clean as possible. So if your description is going to be more than a line long for eBay's page width, you get a read more button. And if the buyer is interested then the the light box will appear right in the middle of the screen, which mm -hmm. is perfect for you know buyer experience, regardless of whether they want to read it or not. It works both ways. Mm -hmm. And then moving on, we're going to have a quick look at the follow button. So again, we've just highlighted that on our screen for you. And this button's really important. We've got a wicked tip for you already uh, around this button, which is that if you click on this follow button like so, and again, if your customer does that, uh, on your page and again we've just got an error come up because I've, I've just been jumping around eBay but if your customer presses that follow button what that means is that your items will, will appear in your their eBay feed so when they go when they go to eBay.co.uk their, their, their feed section which they released last year is that your items will then appear in their feed and that's really important because they may miss the item which they're looking for right now but you're going to be in their feed so it's going to be on their ebay dashboard and ebay are going to market to them with your products and that's key so like but if we ignore all the products on the page right now so the, the primary purpose where the customer came to the page is that if they press that follow button, and I think this is our biggest tip for you straight off, which <laughs> is that when it comes to the billboard image, again, we're, we're going to be really curious to see what you do and what other sellers do with this great big billboard image at the top, is that what happens to maybe if you had this little arrow pointing down to say, follow us, that's like a massive win. So if you don't score the customer today, you could score the customer tomorrow and also in the future as well because your items, which you've got on eBay, are going to be in their product feed. And that's really key, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, definitely. If you, it's just about getting your products in front of more sellers. And the tip that Matt just shared with you, I've seen numerous business pages on Facebook utilize the cover photo in a very similar way. So, mm -hmm. And it works for them. Why wouldn't it work on eBay? Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's almost like Facebook. It's a call to action. That's yeah, what it is. yeah. eBay. It, sorry, let me give a few words out for this. Facebook. The if you've done any marketing on Facebook, go and again, they've they've been through this life cycle of trying to get customers to like them. That's the key call to action: is to press the like button. Is that can you do this for eBay? So that billboard image. Can, what can you do to get the customer? To press that follow button so that's an open suggestion for you and again that's we're thinking about you long term with your business and again if you can get your items in their feed that is happy days the other point of reference are the social sharing icons up here in the top right hand corner now i'm just going to quickly flick through the screens here so i've highlighted them on my screen right now so keep that little section in your mind and if we go across to cardboard legends that email icon doesn't stand out very well if we go to Digital Goa, again, they're, they're, they don't stand out a mile. And the same on Crush Vintage is, again, Crush Vintage is a very complex background underneath those icons. What could you do in your billboard image to make those stand out a little bit more? Maybe you could do a pill, for example, so like the, the corner being teared off in the yeah. top right hand corner. Or if you're not that good, just a, a little simple white box would do the trick as well. It would do indeed. Now, the, the one negative which I can say about these stores is that if I click on the Twitter link up here, is that as a seller, by the looks of it, you don't get any control of what those buttons actually say. So that's not really helpful. Look what I found on at eBay with a link, presumably, back to the eBay store. That's not 
ideal i would again me as my seller hat i would probably want more control over that as well and again maybe we'll see that in later updates from ebay now moving on to the feature products dave this store doesn't actually have any feature products does it no it doesn't they've opted to i'm guessing not have feature products and get their main results on a main listings you know as high up the page as possible Mm mm-hmm and if we jump across to Digital Goa, for example, and we'll see this seller, let me just scroll down and touch, has been and got four products up here. So they've got an $85 item, which is a kit. They've got a $14 item. They've got an $80 and another $80 item on there as well. And it's going to be really curious to see what kind of works with these featured items. Is it going to be a mix of cheaper, high volume items? Or maybe, and again, if we're going to cross to Cardboard Legends, is that if we scroll down and look at their feature items, these are high ticket items. That's $110, $800, $500, and $320. They've just just gone for the juggler there, haven't they? These are like. They're they're not impulse buyers, are they? Right there. No. Far from it. They're they're right up there with the, the high ticket items. And if we look at Jeff's music gear, then we'll see that, again, he's got, yeah, those are high ticket items. They're $80. Again, mm-hmm. converting to pounds, that's about £60, for example. Um, it's interesting, the mix which they've been and got. And again, as far as we're aware, as a seller, you get to choose which items appear at the top as well. Oh, Dave, one thing which we didn't know with the responsive design is that if I just scroll down on Jeff's Music Gear store, we can see that we've got this categories bar on the left-hand side, yep. just like we've got right now on our eBay store. But if I resize this screen, is watch that category bar. So you watching? Let me just click across. We're waiting for the jump. There we go. It's jumped once. We keep going, and it's jumped again. And what's Where been the happen? Go? <laughs> Where did it go? And it went into this button. And then that button, again, imagine we're on an iPad, for example, then you, you, you're bashing the screen. I'm just bashing my desk and <laughs> doing the action. Is that you could bash that button. And what would happen is that that's now a finger friendly menu. So you could then choose that you want your keyboards category and then click onto that. And it just makes it much easier. And so instead of having this category bar wedged down the left hand side of the page, which wouldn't fit because you then lose products, for example, uh, then you've now got this extra pop up menu. And again, it will take customers a while to adapt to this as well, to, to, to realize that this category button does exist but again ebay have been smart they realize that the category bar is going to take up a lot of the page and have been able to put this around for you so it's an inbuilt feature as well and it's one that i really like i think again it's ebay mobile optimizing the site to a new level and to a level which is becoming more and more expected for mobile buyers mm-hmm we also have larger product images as well. So the, the products of the guitars in this case as well are much larger than what they are right now on your eBay store. And you'll also see you've got a column of four of those. Now, there is this little thing called lazy loading images. And what this basically means is that right now you can see that there's eight product images in the main results. And I've just highlighted that on my screen for you. But as we scroll down, look out for a little placeholder image so we see if we can catch this store doing it ah there you go did you just see those fade in fade in at the bottom dave yeah i saw those they uh, snuck in as we uh, we got closer to them mm-hmm. and what that means is that instead of loading up like 20 or 50 product images which will take your customer much longer and again on mobile devices then bandwidth is a huge challenge so instead of upload uh, loading every single one of those images is what eBay is doing is using this this um, mythology or this process called lazy loading images, which basically means is that the extra product images will only be shown when the customer scrolls the page. And as we saw, they, they, they came in very quickly. So if I scroll on down, there you go, and you can see them appearing in at the bottom. So that, that's a huge win for speed. And again, a speed not only on a desktop as well, but also on on an iPad or a mobile device too. Now, an interesting one, Matt, is that the custom pages have gone AWOL. Yeah, they've gone completely AWOL. We can't find them in the new eBay store designs. And again, this is why this is part one 
of a two-part series. So right now, we're just giving you an overview to, to the new eBay stores and what you're going to have available for you. But we've got this big question mark, which is where have the custom pages gone? Because they've gone completely absent without leave. They're not, they're not shown <laughs> anywhere on here. So that's going to be a really curious one. That's why we're going to follow up with a second part. And in part two, we'll actually show you how you can change the different settings for your eBay store and take advantage of the new eBay store designs which are available to you right now. And for anyone who's wondering, who maybe hasn't heard the term custom pages, they were just like the information pages, like your About Us page or your Terms and Conditions pages. Sellers used to be able to create these pages and link off to them. And at the minute, we can't see where they've gone or if they've been taken away, if they're just hidden for the time being. So, yeah, that, that's what we're talking about when we say custom pages. It'll be interesting to find out what the replacement is for them, if there is one, or mm-hmm. how we get to them. <laughs> yeah, but so right now there's a big question mark around them. And again, we'll cover that in part two. Now, number nine was a modal window for viewing products. Now, I want to just share a little story about my wife and how she buys. And again, I've caught her doing this so many times, which sounds bad, but this is just how she shops which is that she'll go onto eBay, make a search, she'll probably end up on someone's eBay store. It could be your eBay store. And what she'll do, she'll go through lots of products. So let's go and do this on uh, Crush Vintage because uh, she's female and she would choose that over a guitar. And what she would do, she would go through each item and open them up in lots and lots of tabs. And of course, there were like 40 tabs open up on my desktop where she's gone shopping and gone into lots of different ones. Whereas the... If I just hover my mouse on top of this image and you'll see, I'll just highlight this on my screen for you. You'll see this little magnifying glass and it's available on all of these images. And again, you can see it just popping up there in the corner. So if we go and click on that little magnifying glass, and this is what we mean by mode or window. It's just this pop up window. uh, That was just a fancy name for that. And you'll see that now again, put myself in the shoes of my wife is that instead of going through all these different tabs, and just open them all up and then going through them one by one. What she can now do is actually see the main product images for the products. So we've got a whole image gallery in here. And again, Dave, it looks like this seller has taken complete advantage of all the 12 available images which they can upload onto eBay. Oh, yeah. And also the fact that they are now large images and they've taken, you know, lifestyle images with a real life model as well. So that they are really taking the photography aspect of this seriously. Mm -hmm. And of course, if she was interested or we were interested in this product, then we can click on more details and actually go off to the item. But if we're not interested, then we can just click anywhere outside, maybe choose a different product and then go into that one. And again, oh, there we go. There's the extra images. They've just been and appeared down at the bottom. We can investigate this product without having to go into every single product page. And again, that's just going to be a huge time saver. And it, again, it really does highlight that you should really be using as many of those 12 images available on each and every single one of your listings. So in this quick overview, we showed you the new eBay store designs for the first time. And this is where we looked at the new features that are available on eBay in the new eBay store layout. So number one, Dave, big fan of this one. Yeah. Responsive design. Basically, it's your same eBay store across all devices. And that's huge. And again, that's why they've gone with this billboard image at the top. And the, we saw the page when we resized the page is that it's the same page, no extra coding required. And it just moves to meet your customer. So it doesn't matter if they're on a a pad or a droid um, or an iPhone, is that the page is going to resize itself to the most appropriate size for for your customer. And also the category column, if you go in like to down to phone size, then that disappears completely and turns into a a nice little button with, again, a light box for the menu. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Indeed, finger friendly, so you can bash it. And again, I'm just there bashing on my desk because that's what you would do on a pad or your phone. You'd bash it with your finger. We also saw that we've got this great big billboard image at the top. 
And also our eBay icons now have been changed. It's gone from a rectangle into this square, this square, which is 150 by 150 pixel square. Oh, and a quick note for those guys who are thinking, oh, I could maybe put this little arrow in for the follow button. That top billboard image is 1,200 pixels wide by 268 pixels. Just again, you, we will include each one of these links to these stores underneath this video anyway, uh, so you can go and check for yourself too. I really am looking forward to see what some of these sellers can do with that billboard image. That's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. What you're going to do with the billboard image, are you, are, are you going to just put a straight brand logo in there? Are you going to highlight the social buttons? What are you going to do about that follow button? Call uh, to actions, you know, advertise sales. There's, mm -hmm. there's a limitless options almost. Mm-hmm. We also saw that the store description now, instead of being this great big block of text at the top of your store, is now going to pop up in a light box if it's too long. We saw the follow button, and that follow button is so key. If there's if there's one thing we should take away from what listening to myself and Dave is that the importance of that follow button, because even if they don't buy from you today, if they've been impressed, follow or like. Think of Facebook, Dave, like you were saying yeah. earlier, is that you're then going to be in your buyer's feed on eBay for the re until they take you off. And that's just like, that's just amazing. From yeah, the, from I mean, point of view. thinking about historically, you had sort of two main actions on an eBay listing. You had the buy button was the main one. You wanted your product to buy. And that is still the case. You still want the, your you know customer to buy. But I think now the second primary, you know, action is that follow button. That mm. has preceded any watch list, in my opinion, because that gives you much greater reach on a much more wider variety of products. And for a much more longer term. So if they press watch, it's only about that item. If they yeah. press follow, it's about all your items. So if they, again, if there's only one point. If responsive design is well cool, but if there's only one thing you should take away. It's the importance of that follow button. We also saw about the featured products that you can select up to four products to appear at the top. And as me and Dave have been looking at these different stores, what we have noticed and again, uh, is that those items do rotate and you do have control of those as well. We also saw that you've got larger images and also that techie nerdy kind of term called lazy loading. We actually saw that in action and we explained why that's cool. And that's basically down for speed so that your eBay store loads much, much more faster than what it would have done if it had to load all the product's images. And for anyone who knows anything about websites, speed is key. Uh, and anyone will vouch for that one. Yeah. Another key one there is that custom pages have gone AWOL. And as it stands currently, we don't know where they've gone or if they'll be coming back or what the replacement may be. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're hoping to have more of that in part two when we'll uh, we'll go looking for them. <laughs> we, we, we'll go looking and we'll show you how you can set your store up with the new eBay store design. Also, we saw the modal window. Again, modal was just this posh name for a pop-up window. And that's really cool. So instead of like, again, I use my wife as, an, uh, as the analogy there, I suppose she would open up lots of tabs, is that now you can just press the magnifying icon and they pop up in front of you. And again, that just stresses the importance of having not only great quality images so that the, your customer can inspect the item which they're viewing, but also the, to use every single one of them so that they don't have to, so they can make the educated choice. So when they click through the item, they're only going there for hopefully a mere formality to just check over the rest of the details and then go on and buy. Yeah, definitely. And I think one of the concluding points, Matt, of, of this new eBay store design is this is the first sort of major change in eBay store designs since, you know, in, well, as you said earlier, in at least 10 years. And this is eBay that has come rocketing right up to, you know, 2014. Mm -hmm. and, and just as we were recording this, I wrote down three points. And, and the immediate thing that sprung to mind is this is eBay going social. You know, the follow button, that just screams Twitter. You know, mm -hmm. you follow people on Twitter. The billboard image, that is blatantly a cover photo from Facebook. In, <laughs> that, you know, that's blatantly. 
it is, and it's, it's such prime real estate on, on your eBay store page. You know, what you can do with that is, is really up to you. And then, of course, something which we haven't perhaps seen yet, but again, it almost links with the follow button. If your products get shown into people's feeds, or if we then look at eBay collections, which we haven't really mentioned much in, well, at all in this video, but it's, it's coming up, mm -hmm. then that just screams Pinterest. But it's Pinterest, as you mentioned, Dave, is Pinterest with a buy button, which is, is exactly what you want for a transactional website. It's the one piece which is missing from this Pinterest. Is, this is like eBay taking social and taking e-commerce and ramming them together. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see what comes off the back of these changes. You know, eBay have changed buying habits in the past. And, you know, I, I wouldn't put it past them to do it again. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be interesting to see what comes of this, whether, you know, we see more social e-commerce mashups coming along. Mm -hmm. so, like you said, they've taken the best from each social network networking site yep. and have made it transactional. That's the cool thing. So, yeah, there's me complaining that for the last decade or however long, <laughs> eBay haven't been and made some like major updates. But now they, they have... <clears throat> is that they've been and taken what I classed is the better points from each of the sites. So they've been and taken, as you said, the, the billboard image at the top, the follow yeah. or the like button. It's a huge yeah, one. Yeah, like, see it as a like button, button as, well. as well. And they've been and got the feed, the best point of um, Pinterest, but it's a transactional environment. So it's going to be really, really curious. So apologies for the croaky voice. Got a bit of a cold at the moment. But for myself, Matt. And me, Dave. Thank you for listening in and we'll see you in part two and we'll show you how you can take advantage of the new eBay store layout for your business and we'll be giving as many tips and suggestions as we can and we'll see you soon. Cheerios. So we hope you've been and found this video guide useful and myself, Matt and me, Dave, we believe that to use Magento, you don't need a degree in nerd. And that's what we've exactly what we've been and done. We've been and created you over 70 full HD video guides on how to use Magento, all in plain English. And if you'd like to know more about myself, Matt, or me, Dave, and more about what we're doing at Understanding E, why not visit us at understandinge.com forward slash now. And we'll see you there. And for myself, Matt. And me, Dave. We'll see you soon.